All right, you are still watching Ways Now International Day of Mind Awareness and Assistance in Mind Action is observed every year on April 4th to raise awareness against explosive minds and gather um, assistance towards their eradication. The Mind Action community plays a significant role towards achieving the Mind Action goals and it's led, um, it is led by the United Nations Mind Action Service. Ah. You know when you watch some old movies where they have all those um, Mine, mining scenes, mine sites, and all of that, like <sighs> it's quite scary. You, you know, don't know where what next step you would take. I, that I keep saying I'm happy I'm born in this generation <laughs> because uh, you know going back to like the Vietnam War, World War Two, where they plant mines and you're just walking as a soldier. Yeah, just, and you just, just detonate. Ends. Yeah. I know, no, no, come on, uh, please, I prefer this one. You know what's happening. At least we, <laughs> <laughs> you understand. We know where. <laughs> Well, you know, do you understand, like, I, I mean, you know, some things are better just left in history, historical books, not to be experienced, honestly, because just that thing be is so scary. Like, you know, when you watch some movies and you see those mind sites that, you know, the person is trying to go When they have casualties. Through, when they have all those casualties, you see, like, your heart will be palpitating. Please let it not detonate. Let it not, you know, so it's, uh, I'm happy that, again, people are actually even very... You know, some things we have, we don't even care about these things, but this thing still remains very, very uh, much an issue for some other parts of the world, Hence even the in this age and name. time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Isi, let me come to you. What did you find for us in the news today? Hmm. My story in the news is a, um, it's, it's, it's rather a sad one, and it has to do with a young man who was killed in school. This happened in Uniben in Benin. And this is the, the, the headline that caught my attention was Uniben condemns killing of final year student. And uh, the management of the University of Benin has condemned the killing of the final year student, popularly known as Maya. Uh, he's, a, he's a student of the Department of Public Admin administration, pardon me, and he is uh, said to be the chief care guide in the, in the school, and he was shot dead by unknown gunmen. So the university, this happened actually to, yesterday, last night actually, and uh, the organization, which is Uniban, has sent the PRO to talk to the public about it, and um, while commiserating with the people and the family, who have lost a loved one, they are also expressing the fact that they are looking into it with the help of the police and the internal security to confirm how this young man was killed and who were the culprits that were involved. Mm -hmm. And he, the, um, the PRO's name is uh, Dr. Benedita Ehanire. Ehanire, pardon me, it's not Ehanire. And while she was doing this, she expressed her pain that at a time like this, where children are supposed to be going to school, they are actually being killed in school. So this should not happen again. While I do understand where she's coming from, I should also reiterate the fact that when students go to school, they should face the, the, the sole purpose of them being in school, which is... Uh, their education and not, you know, partake in cultic, um, cultist activity or cult uh, activities, basically. Mm -hmm. mm. That's quite unfortunate. Yeah, quite unfortunate. The yeah. school is somewhere that you go to learn mm. and you're supposed to be safe within the confines of the school. So to imagine that your um, child or ward could, you know, go to school and not return home is quite unfortunate. And I think um, it's in the, it's the responsibility of the university to actually investigate and find out what exactly happened. Happened, absolutely. And to actually report to the authorities when they do. And I, I guess, well, my sympathies to the parents of- Just so sad, final know, year student. student. A final year student after strike <laughs> and everything, so it's, and there are some it's things, quite there are some things better left to the imagination. It's okay, let me take your story. Um, my story is um, 
speaking on the divorce rate amongst young couples in the FCT. So um, the judge of the Federal Republic of Nigeria Magistrate Court, Sheikh um, Ayuba Abubakar, has expressed worries over um, the high rate of divorce amongst young couples in Nigeria, especially in the FCT. You know, he expressed his concern while speaking at the annual Ramadan lecture over the weekend. He said as a judge that he's having a high rate of divorce, especially the rate in the FCT is so alarming. Young couples in two years, three years marriage dragged themselves to court and he has discovered that most of them, there's no way out to separate them and for them to live in peace. So, um, well, the story goes on, but it's quite, it's just quite interesting for for him to be bothered about the high rate of divorce. I guess um, the kind of cases that are going on now. So for me, I just feel like, um, yes, it has been of note, I think, recently that um, there has been a high case of divorces. And this is... I think it's not even unique to the FCT. No, that's what I'm saying. It's a general... <laughs> tell, us, think, tell us why people are divorcing why, in your state. Why do you think I'm, I'm kind of looking and saying... <laughs> no, 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 no. You are the, you are the FCT totally person. This is totally unfair because this big <laughs> Yes, it's like a FCT. single data. It happens so, everywhere. So, so for me, I think generally in Nigeria, or in the world actually, um, the impatience or the, the, the lack of character of this generation has not only eaten across different things from politics, governance, has also come into our basic family unit, which is marriage. Um, most people are ready to disagree at anything. This is the most highly self-aware um, generation in life. Generation. And most shockingly, highly self-aware, but totally oblivious of the word <laughs> selflessness. And because of that, you know, 80 or 90% of the things that you read are all about mm -hmm. you, about me, no, about but this. Kunle, that was, that's been prejudging, actually. How I'm, can you say that so. um, oblivious of selflessness? I'll give you an example. Um, let's take um, your celebrity people, because that would be very easy for, you to for everyone to understand. So, um, um, Meghan Marco, and this is not a common, common position. Omega Marco, you're getting married into the British royal family. What did you expect? Hmm. Any, if you're getting married into any royal family anywhere in the world, yeah, you know what you're getting into. Let's not go into this. You know what you're going to expect. What do you expect? A puppy. You're not going to get that. That is the tradition. That's who they are. If you want to stay away from it, stay away from it. If you don't want heat, get out of the kitchen. And that's the way hmm. things are. The, uh, the present... The present generation we live in tries to, uh, how that put you, I, I don't want to use the word woke, <laughs> because with the amount of Google, I can tell you most people do not know more than one river or two rivers in Africa. So I, I, I really don't, even with chat GPT, so I don't agree really, like woke means you know what it means. Being up to date. So I, I think um, we've relied a lot on, we, we, we are so selfish in this generation. Um, we're not ready to give back to anything, and our impatience and intolerance levels are quite high. It's very short. I agree with you. Now, this is a story I want you to take for me. <laughs> um, Donald Trump has arrived at the Manhattan Criminal Court to surrender to authorities and face charges. Trump has reportedly been charged with 34 felony courts of falsification of business records. According to report, Trump will be fingerprinted but not handcuffed. He will also um, not have a mock shot not taken. Mm -hmm. This comes as reports are circulating that the judge presiding over the case may issue a gag order, because you know, the Masabi talk, preventing the former president from speaking publicly about his court proceedings. While in his motorcade um, to the courthouse, Trump released the following statement heading to Lower Manhattan, the courthouse seems so surreal. Wow, they're going to arrest me. Can't believe this is happening in America. Maga. What's me on Maga? It says more to come. So, I mean, this is, uh, we all know the back and forth that has been going with um, the president. But when you, you that you are, you know, someone that lives, it, breathes politics, when you hear things like this or you see things like this happening, you know, what does it like? What does it mean to you? So um, there are multiple ways of looking at it. Um, the first would be from the average emotional position, which is 
Ah, the rest is someone who is witch hunt, being witch hunted. But we need to understand that even during his tenure of presidency, Trump has been already arraigned on quite a number of charges, but because of the immunity of the office of president, he was exempted from such actions during COVID. The Capitol Hill attack, the list is endless, not attending the inauguration of your, the next pres incoming president. There are lots of things Trump is being held for. And America is all about institutions. Let's not forget that. So since America is all about institutions, Trump has a bid which, of course, is trying to hide, but we all know he wants to run for president next uh, this coming year, this next uh, cycle. Circle, yeah. So what is going to happen is critical. He's, 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 he's hoarded White House documents. He's known for a cult following. The way America or the world thinks, strategically, Africa, you stop the guy after the election has been won and say it was rigged. America, Europe, Britain, you stop the guy before he wins the primaries. That's a smarter way to do it. This is no offense. Please, I'm not referring to anybody in Nigeria, <laughs> but I'm just <laughs> annexing the, the, how we look at things generally. So Trump has stepped quite on a lot of lines. Um, his issues with Congress, threatening to not even attend State of, the, State of the Union while being American president, which has never been heard before. Um, Trump has taken quite a lot of time. And he, I think all of this, I know why he won't be handcuffed. He's an ex-president. America course. must protect the that institution. That office. So he won't be handcuffed. He will be gagged also because we all know Trump. Trump is like a machine a, gun with yes, a with keypad. Words. He's a machine gun with a keypad. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, Trump, Trump will be held a little bit. But I think all of this is being done so that he doesn't run in the next cycle. And once he doesn't run in the next cycle, I'm sure as much as he has broken the law, there will be softer charges, you know, uh, just basic fines, restrictions on some actions, and he'll be let go of. So do you ever see this kind of thing happening in Nigeria? No. No. Okay, let me... Not anytime soon. Let me, let, me, let me say that no, way. It there, could happen. There, there's a possibility. Yes, there's it There's a possibility happen. of it happening in Nigeria. And the only possibility is this. The day we all enjoyed 24 hours light for three years in Nigeria, then we can start to think of it. I didn't say it will happen. Start to think of it. That's how close we are to We'll it. leave it there. Wow. <laughs> we have that's, an interesting conversation. Far. To take this conversation further, stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>